so far in this voxel game that we've been creating, we have the ability to sort of create this little world and also break blocks and place blocks. But the world that we've created is completely flat, and as we all know, the world isn't flat. So we should do something about this and add some terrain generation. To keep things simple for now, the terrain is going to be created using a height map that is generated by Simplex Noise, where Simplex Noise is an algorithm used to create these smooth looking textures, like the one you can see here. But if we were to use this function to create heights rather than colours for a texture, you can see how it would create a smooth height map. And the way this algorithm is used is you input an x and z value, for example a position in the world, and you get back a value between minus 1 and 1. The nice thing about this function is that if you input two positions in the world that are quite close together, then the output you're going to get back for these two separate inputs will be pretty similar to each other. So anyways, to start off, two functions are going to be created. The first function will be used to generate a height map for a column of chunks in the world, and the second function will be used to apply the height map to a chunk. And this has been done separately because multiple chunks can sort of share the same x and z position in the world and we don't want to generate the same height map multiple times. The way this height map function works is I first of all loop through the block positions of some chunk column in the world and then get the noise value at those exact coordinates. So right now this noise value is in between minus 1 and 1, but ideally we want a positive number, so by adding 1 to it and dividing it by 2 we can instead make the noise value between 0 and 1. I then multiply the number by 5 to give it some height before applying it to the height map. And this is done for every single block position in the world. But unfortunately, as you can see here, this isn't quite right because the terrain being generated is kind of bumpy. And this is because jumping from one block position to another, even if it is just an increase in one, is actually pretty big in terms of noise. So the thing to do here is to take the inputs and divide it by some number to make the jump between the positions a little bit smaller. And by doing that, the bumps become a lot more spread out, and therefore the terrain becomes a little bit smoother. And if you increase the numbers by a little bit, which will spread out the bumps even more and make the terrain a bit taller, then the results can become pretty cool looking. But this doesn't look very realistic, and that's because natural terrain tends to be very bumpy and unpredictable. You know, what we have here is just way too smooth. So if we were to take the current world generation and sort of apply it to an image instead, then you'd get a sort of overly smooth texture like this that looks nothing like actual terrain. But if we were instead to sort of calculate the noise function at the same location multiple times with slightly different inputs, then you would get multiple different outputs. And then if you were to sort of combine these into one final noisy image, then you would get something that looks a lot like this. An image that looks a lot more like an actual height map, a lot more like real terrain, and most importantly of all, does not look like an overly smooth blurry image like we had before. So taking that combining noise logic and applying it to the actual game itself gives a result that looks something like this. And as you can see, it looks a lot better than before because it kind of resembles actual terrain now, which is pretty nice. But there's still only a single block type, and that's grass. And you know, for more interesting terrain, we need more block types, so I feel like it's a good time to actually add support for that kind of thing. So different block types have different data, for example textures, whether they can be collided with, and what item they drop when destroyed. So how can we store this data about the different block types? We don't want to be storing this data on a pair block basis, because otherwise we'll have a lot of blocks sharing the same data, which will be a waste of memory. So instead what we can do is store the data about each block type just once, in some kind of array. And then, as mentioned in the first episode, the chunks themselves just store a bunch of numbers which represent the block ID, and these block IDs double as some kind of index into that block data array. For example, if I'm building the chunks mesh, I need to know what texture is associated with each block ID. So if I come across the number 2, I can go to block index 2 of the block data array and then grab all the information about the grass block, including the textures. So that's how we can store the block data, but we also need a way to load the information about the different block types into the game. And as I was planning to eventually add some kind of modding support through scripting, I decided to go with Lua for loading this information. Where Lua is a language designed to be used alongside game engines, and it's used by loads of games such as Factorio, Fable 2, and World of Warcraft. And it's used by interfacing of a library written in C that allows you to create a virtual machine in your existing code to run Lua code. 
But to make my life a lot easier, I decided to use another library alongside it called Soul 2, which is sort of a C++ wrapper around the original C API. So using this library, I created the function in the C++ called addVoxel and made it available from the Lua code. And what this function does is adds a new block type into the game. So then from the Lua code, I'm able to call this function to add new blocks, for example, water, grass or dirt, and also define their properties, such as their name and texture files. And the reason Lua is being used for this is because eventually the gameplay code is going to be programmed using Lua anyway, and it's also going to make it a lot easier to create a modding API for the game. So anyways, this Lua file is ran when the server is started, loading all of the different block types into the game, storing it in the array as mentioned earlier. When a client connects to the server, this block data array will be sent over to them, who will then load the different texture files for all of the different block types and store the information about the blocks into an array, exactly the same as the one on the server side. And doing it this way means that the person hosting the server is able to change the block types in the Lua script however they want to, and all the clients connected will be synchronised with the same block data. So anyways, once the server is loaded up with different block data into the game, then the world generation code is able to start using it. And this can be done by comparing the position of a block in the chunk with the height map. So for example, if the wide position of the block is at the same position as the height map, then you would set it to a grass block, but if it's underneath that, you would set it to a dirt block or a stone block for example. And the world generation being done using multiple block types, plus the client knowing how to texture them, results in a world that looks like this. But anyways, as I'm sort of using this project as a way to learn networking, I'm trying to keep things as simple as I can, and so I'm probably not going to be adding the infinite terrain thing you would find in a typical Minecraft clone, but rather keep the world as a fixed size. But to keep things interesting, I thought I could sort of embrace this limitation and make it so the world is generated as sort of a small island. So this can be done by taking the current world generation and multiplying each point in the world of another height map, which looks like the sort of a shape of an island. And what this would do is multiply the heights at the edges of the world of zero, which would result in no height, while the heights in the middle of the world would be multiplied by one, which would result in their heights being unaffected. And so taking the original height map and multiplying it by this island height map gives you this nice little island shaped terrain thing. And this is how it looks in game, and as you can see it looks quite nice. But the only thing that's really missing from this island right now is some kind of vegetation, like some trees. So this really takes two steps, with the first one being where to actually place the trees in the world, and the second step being to set the blocks that make it up. So for finding where to place the trees I just went with a quick and dirty method of picking a random number whenever I place a grass block and if this random number is above a certain threshold then I would generate a tree there. So for generating this tree I picked a random number to be the height of the trunk and then used some four loops to place a bunch of wood and leaf blocks into the shape of a tree. So anyways, after doing this and placing a bunch of trees in my island, I now have a nice looking forest. So even though we have trees now, the world is still feeling a little bit empty and so I feel like the next thing to add would be tall grass and that kind of thing. And the placement of these tall grass blocks can be done in exactly the same way that trees are sort of placed in the world, where you would pick a random number and if this number is above a certain threshold then you would put a tall grass block there. So anyways, after doing this, I now have trees and tall grass on the island. So at this point, the only thing that's really left to add for the world generation is biomes. And this can be implemented by using noise, except rather than using the noise values as height for a height map, you instead use them as sort of a biome selection in a biome map. So this means when generating the world, we now create a biome map as well as the height map like we were before. So the way this biomap works is when a block is being set in the world, it would first of all check the biomap to see which biome that block belongs to, and then place the correct block accordingly. For example, in a desert biome it would place a sand block, but in a forest biome it would place a grass block. And when it comes to placing decorations in the world, for example trees or tall grass, it works in pretty much the same way where it would first of all check the biome to see which decorations it has, and then check to see like how often that decoration would appear, and then place them accordingly throughout the world. So for example in a forest biome you would place a tree pretty often, but in the desert you would place a cactus instead, but a lot more sparsely. 
So anyways, here's the final result with just two biomes for now, a desert and some kind of grass slash woodland thing, where each biome has their own unique decorations like tree and cactus and their own block types such as grass and sand. So yeah, the game now has support for the basics of world generation. The only thing that's really left to do for this is to find some way to take the world generation code and somehow move it into the lower code so it's a lot more easier to add things. For example, if you wanted to create a mod which adds a new biome into the game, then you would very easily be able to do that. So anyways, that's the end of today's episode. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Quick shout out to my Patreon supporters, thank you Killer Crazy Man, Connor McNeely, Timothy Gibbons, Timo Schroeder, Alan Fernandez, Ben Sayers, Michael Kirsch, Lucas Starenberger, Neil Blakely Milner and Nate Brown, thank you very much for the support. So anyways, once again thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time.